What's poppin' tea squad? It's your girl Keisha, and I am here with my all tea, all shade, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, season one, episode four review. We are on Vlogmas day two. Make sure you checked out yesterday's video. It was my nostalgic tea story on the Mary Jane girls. Remember, my schedule for Vlogmas month will be Monday's nostalgic tea stories. Tuesday will be my top 10 videos of whether it be uh, my top 10 albums, movies, television shows, um, or books of the year. Wednesdays, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and Orange County reviews. Thursdays, Braxton Family Values reviews. Fridays, Behind the Scenes Tea. Saturday, Spill the Tea. Sunday, Power uh, Real Housewives of Potomac and Real Housewives of Atlanta reviews. We got a busy, busy week, lots of reviews, lots of videos. So I'm really excited to be participating in Vlogmas for my second year in the row. But anyway, let's get into tonight's episode of Salt Lake City because I give it an A. It was everything. So we start off the episode exactly where we left off last week with all the ladies at Whitney's uh, 1920s themed party. So Jen asked Meredith to come talk to her. Mind you, she's already had a couple of drinky drinks. So she already in her fee-fees and feeling some type of way. So they go sit at the uh, opposite table from the ladies, which is only one table over. So you can hear what they're saying. So uh, Jen says to Meredith, maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm feeling a little insecure. We had the sleepover plan. Meredith is like, you know, can we just talk about this at another time? This is not the time or the place. Heather in her confessional says, I've known Jen for years. And when she gets this look, she's possessed and there's nothing you can do about it. So Meredith says to Jen, am I supposed to be mean to Mary because y'all into it? And I'm like, exactly like, girl, this is not third grade. Like, what the fuck do you think we're, we're, that we're doing here? So Jen says, I'm not saying that. But how are you my friend and somebody hurt not only me, but my family? Like, you're okay with that? And that's not okay with me. <laughs> she hurt your family because she said you smell like hospital, darling. Like, you are dragging this. You're pushing it. You're making it way more than what the fuck it is. Like, I honestly feel like the bitch is doing you a favor. <laughs> like, she told you you smell like the hospital, bitch. A.K.A. your stank. She was trying to be your friend of 10, girl. You got a little old about you. You know, you might, well, you know, go fix that. But you like dragging it, bitch. Like, it's not that deep. It's not that serious. Like, you're putting 10 on 20. So, Gina, her confessional says, Meredith and I have grown very close over the last year. Not only do I think she doesn't understand, but she's being dismissive. It's another knife in the back. Where's the loyalty? And I'm like... Listen to what you just said. Y'all just got close over the past year. I don't even consider a bitch my friend friend. <laughs> if we only been friends for a year, like you got to put in time. I got to be able to study you, be around you, like really get to know you. I don't let people in like that. I'm like Mary when she said that shit later on in the episode. Like it take a lot for me to call you my motherfucking friend, bitch. So the fact that y'all just start building this shit with over the last year, like, girl, you putting way too much on it. And second of all, just because you into it with somebody don't mean that she got to be into it with somebody. Like, we're not children here. And especially with this being a new friendship, like, you really asking too much of her. So, and then the whole thing about her saying this like another knife in the back, like, narcissistic much. Like, everything isn't about you, girl. No. With your jigsaw face. That's that's who exactly who she looked like. Jigsaw. That goddamn monster for that fucking movie. Like, work on this. So, Meredith says, what I saw was you and Mary crying, saying y'all love each other. And that's what I said to y'all on episode two review. If she knew she was still feeling some type of way, she shouldn't have made up for her. She shouldn't have been crying and hugging her. Like, that's fair. Fake. That's some fake ass shit. Don't cry in my face talking about it's all good. We cool. But then you still want to be mad about it to other people. Girl, get somewhere with that bullshit. So um Jen said, well, that's not it. Whitney and Heather are ear hustling. Mind you, Whitney and Heather are cousins, so I'm just loving this duo. So Jen says to Meredith, the only reason I accepted her bullshit apology was because it was your birthday. Girl, it wasn't even her birthday party, for real, for real, for real. Let's not forget you make the whole goddamn party about yourself. There was no sign of Meredith anywhere around that party. That whole party was themed around you, bitch. So don't try to act like you really did something for this bitch. Girl, get out of here. So Meredith and her confessional say, it's been 
week since my birthday and I haven't heard anything else about it. I thought everything was fine. Even if there was a problem, we're not 10. We're in our 40s. Nobody should be dictating who should be friends with who. If you don't like it, that's not my problem. And I was like, okay, Meredith, bitch. All right, I see you, ho. At first, I was a little iffy on Meredith. But Meredith, the real bitch, like, I don't have time for this shit, girl. I'm over here cheating on my husband, trying to keep this nigga in the dark. <laughs> like, I got bigger fish to fry than you sitting up here being mad because I'm still friends with a hoe that you don't like. Girl, get out of here with that bullshit. So, um, Whitney wonders, should she go find out what's wrong because it is her event that, you know, Jen is acting a fool at. So, Lisa volunteers, however, to go over to, you know, see what's going on to try to, you know, calm the situation. So she goes over there and she was like, uh, Jen says to Meredith, you think she's a good friend? Good luck with that shit, Meredith. <laughs> so Lisa comes over and says, calm down. It's a party. Meredith say, this is not productive. I'm no longer engaging in this conversation. And you know, anytime you talk like that to a motherfucker when they mad, that pisses them off even more when you try to act like they the crazy person and you're the calm, cool, collected, sane one and like you're doing too much. Like, I'm just not going to engage this. This is just not my Steve's like no say no like that really pissed Jen off so Jen was like are you serious you're gonna do you're gonna go with Mary who fucked her grandfather <laughs> like here we go the floodgates have opened so Lisa and her confessional say you can't say that that's not okay so Mary and her confessional say I heard that clearly there's something about me you find fascinating because I'm always in your mouth and I if I was Mary I would have went over and said something to that bitch right then and there because bitch you ain't gonna be calling me no grandfather fuck whether it's true or not, bitch. Shut your jigsaw face ass up. So Heather and her confessional say, I fucked the grandpa. Big deal. <laughs> I was like, you go meet loaf. You go meet loaf. You look like you done fucked several grandpas. Hell, you look like a grandpa. That further made me like Heather even more because Heather just like, girl, like... We all done fuck some old dick once in our life. So Whitney says in her confessional, that's just rude. And I once again, I went up for Whitney. I love Whitney, Heather, and Mary. They are my favorites. Meredith is coming on over to the good side, but I still got my eye on her. So Jen says, I'm telling you now, you can either be on my side or not on my side. And once again, you said to Heather and Whitney, on last week's episode that you didn't want them to pick sides, but that's obviously what you want because you just said out your mouth. Like, you want everybody to turn on Mary and to ice her out. And ain't nobody playing that game with you. And I'm so happy that these ladies are looking at you like you're a fucking psychopath. So, um... Lisa says, no more tequila for you. And I was like, hey, man, because that's part of the problem, too. So Jen says, okay, go hang out with weird-ass Mary Crosby that married her fucking grandfather. <laughs> Lisa said, Jen, don't say that. Meredith is back over to the table with Mary and she says, you know, I don't need to be yelled at like that. So Lisa says, you know, I love Meredith. She's like my sister. I love you both. There are no sides. Jen at this point, makeup is a mess because she's been crying and she's been wiping this part of her face. So her real skin is showing through and all of this is hella red and shit. She like somebody that punched her in the nose. I'm like, girl, just go home. You are a sloppy mess. So uh, Meredith gets up to leave because she has had enough. She's embarrassed. You know, she's a sophisticated white lady. She don't have time to be arguing public. So Jen says, you should probably leave. You should probably leave. <laughs> so Whitney goes over to Jen and Whitney and her confession say, Jen has a history of freaking the fuck out. That's why I go over to check on her out of pure fear. I don't want her to freak out on me for not checking on her. And I was like, Whitney, you ain't got no reason to be scared of her just because she, you know, uh, is a minority in the community. Whitney, I mean, uh, what's her name? Jen, Jen thinks she hard because she a minority. Because, you know, she, people thought she was black. Then she think that somebody's supposed to be scared of her. Like, girl, who the fuck are you? They scared of your face, but should nobody be scared of you? So Lisa goes over to Meredith and to stop her before she leaves out. Mary was like, I don't tolerate women swearing at me. So Jen said, I'm going to call Sharif and ask her he said. So she tried calling her husband. She leave him a frantic message telling him to come get her ass. He ain't answering the phone. She's like, where is he at? So she hang up the phone. So Jen leaves out and Heather follows her. But before Heather leaves out, she tells the girls at the table to watch her food and don't nobody touch her burger or her drink. <laughs> Or her little chicken drumstick or whatever the fuck she was waiting on. Because Heather was hungry, bitch. Heather like me. I didn't 
come all this way not to eat, bitch. I want my food. So she follows Jen outside and she's like, Jen, Jen. And Jen say, don't yell at me. Shut the fuck up. And I was like, this bitch is absolutely insane. Like Jen should not be allowed to drink in public because that bitch is a sloppy, angry drunk that get in her feelings. So Heather says, Sharif ain't even her yet. Heather calls Sharif and tells him where, uh, where they're at. He comes up and he picks up his wife. And I know he was looking like, I can't believe this bitch is embarrassing me on television. You know, he's a prominent uh, college football coach. Like, you know, he's a big deal. So it's just like, my wife is on television, a sloppy, drunk ass mess. She getting caught crying and shit. I know he's tired of dealing with her. So the next day, Whitney is at Mary's house. And Whitney says, did you enjoy the party? And Mary says, yeah, to the end of the night. So Meredith tells her son what Brooks, what happened or whatever. So Whitney says to Meredith, uh, Jen got really mad at Meredith. And Mary says, and me. She called me a grandfather in Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> so then we see Lisa and Heather out together and they're discussing what happened. And uh, Heather says to Lisa, Jen scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Once again, Jen little beady ass is pumping fear in all these white hoes hearts. So Meredith says to Brooke, she needs to apologize for the way she spoke to me. Mary says to Whitney, clearly she hates me. And Wendy, Whitney says, I don't know why she has such a problem with you. And Mary says, because she wants to be the big dog. And that's exactly what she is. Like, she wants to be the leader of the group. And she don't like the fact that everybody likes Mary. Um, I think she wants to try to prove that Mary is this, like, false person like she's uh, putting on airs or like she's not as genuine as she seems and I do agree that there's a lot of shit that comes along with Mary a lot of you guys have been inboxing me like videos and stuff with her family exposing her and whatever but even with all of that being said I still like Mary I don't give a fuck about how Mary got her money that's between her and her weird ass family I really honestly don't give a fuck I like Mary on the show Mary is funny as hell to me I like her personality I don't really give a fuck about what she did in her real life to get that damn church if she went about it the wrong way if her and that grandfather of hers is lying they gonna have to deal with the man upstairs with that baby and if they are some cult shit if they are janking these people out their money they gonna have to deal with the big man upstairs like ain't nothing i can do about it to say about it because god gonna rag tag that ass but for the meanwhile i like mary i really honestly do i think that she is a pertinent part of this show and a much needed part of this show so um uh, Meredith meets up with Lisa at an art gallery and Meredith says, <clears throat> there's something I need to tell you. Seth and I have been separated for a little while. Lisa says, I'm going to cry. Oh my God. Cause you know, they're couples friends. They're very entwined with each uh, other's families. So Meredith and her confessional says, I didn't want her to feel like she had to take sides or whatever. Lisa is so emotional. And Meredith says, you know, we lost our dynamic together and we had to regroup. So we're kind of like dating each other. Um, and Lisa says, if you can make it work, make it work. So Lisa was like, does anybody else know? And she was like, yeah, just Jen. So Lisa was like, I'm not going to bring it up to anybody. This will just stay between us. And I was like, duh, like, it ain't your place to go and tell nobody else but I like that she did care about Meredith and that you know she is there for her friend and that she got her friends back I still ain't really seeing it for Lisa but you can tell she really does care about Meredith so Lisa goes to see Mary at her house and we get a better view of Mary's home which the the decor was very old looking to me. I know she has some Versace pieces, but just because it's Versace don't mean that it's the shit. Like every the furniture just looked old and out of date. But you know, motherfuckers be buying that old vintage edge furniture thinking because they paid nine thousand dollars for it, that means something. The shit is just ugly. So Lisa and her confessional say to me, Mary's house is a little disjointed from her personal style because you know in her personal style she just so chic, and I'm like chic where she wears a hodgepodge of designer bullshit that she don't know how to put together so then she says it's more like her house is more like eclectic and then, that was a nice way of saying her oh, shit is ugly <laughs> so mary's son we find out about his little girlfriend a prada purse for her uh for christmas he bought her a chinchilla coat for valentine's day i was like oh this little girl got her a sucker on her hands and i bet you nine times out of ten the little bitch is white i bet you she white but i'm like this little girl got her a sucker on her hands i bet you if he ain't fuck she fucking the shit out of him and he don't know what to do with that good white pussy so um lisa 
says to Mary, what did you think of Whitney's party? I was like shocked. I didn't know they had like burlesque dancers. And that was her way of trying to get Mary to talk about Whitney. Because, you know, she always forever judging Whitney and try to give Whitney that whole, you know, label. Mary was like, well, she likes pose. Not that that's a big deal. She just likes pose. And even though that comic could be considered shady, I didn't really consider it shady. I considered it facts. Like she liked pose. That, that's, what her, that's what she liked to do. But I do feel like um, Lisa was on that bullshit trying to get uh, Mary to talk about Heather. So Mary says, you know, I'm going to throw a luncheon to iron things out so the girls can be real. I want to invite Jen, but I can't deal with the outbreaks. She's just so angry at me. And I don't understand why. Where is this coming? And so Lisa, uh, um, she said, where is this coming? No, I'm sorry. Lisa says, where is this coming from? What do you think it is? And Mary says, I don't know what it is. She was like, I think it's competition. And I was like, exactly. That's what it is. It's competition. Because you can't be that mad. That girl said you smell like hospital. Like, girl, get out of here. So Jen goes to see Heather at her house. And she's wearing this foul <laughs> coat and Chanel fanny pack. Like, I got to give it to Jen. Some of her pieces really be hidden. Some of her pieces be a little bit over the top. Very empire-ish. Very cookie-ish to me. So, Jen has already ordered sushi to have at this lady's house. So, um, Heather was like, should we just eat out of the containers? And Jen was like, girl, we can eat out of these. And Heather says, just dark and dirty the way you like it, the way I like it. Black, tall, and available. And I was like, I know she don't mean no harm by what she's saying, but I just didn't like it. Like, that whole dark and dirty, the way I like it, black, tall, and available. Like, okay, bitch, we get it. You like black dick. That's the, probably the only thing that's gonna ever fuck you, meat love. Like, ain't no white nigga checking for your ass, because you built just like they grandpa. You look just like they great granddaddy. Ain't no white man check for you. Like, girl, bye. So Heather says, you know, talk to me about Saturday. Jen says last week was a hard week. The whole football season, it gets very hard. I get to, uh, I have to be a good wife, but I don't, you know, see my husband. My dad's anniversary of his death is, you know, and so she gets very emotional. And Jen, her confessional says, my dad passed away almost a year ago. This has been the hardest thing that I've ever dealt with in my life. And right then and there, that's when we really get to see See what Jen's problem really is. It ain't got shit to do with Meredith or Mary. This is, she has misplaced anger. She's still dealing with her father's death. And she's also low-key mourning the, the deterioration of her marriage. Like, she's been playing the good wife, you know, put on the good face and pretending like everything is good. But the bitch is lonely. Her kids is grown now. She don't have them to occupy her time. Her nigga is gone all the time. And she relies on her friends to fulfill what she's not getting at home. But that's not your friend's uh, expertise. That's not what they're here for. They're here just to be your friend, bitch. Not to be your husband and your children, girl. So you and your husband need to sit down and reevaluate your lifestyle. You know, you need to start implementing some things. Or... Leave that nigga like I don't know or find some fulfillment in yourself, get you a job or something. So um Heather even asked her, Do you feel lonely? And Jen was like, A hundred percent I feel lonely. Jen and her confessional says, When my dad passed away, Sharif wasn't there because he had to go to a football game. I sucked it up like a good football wife is supposed to, but he'll never understand how much he hurt me. And I feel like that's a problem. I don't give a fuck about no football game. My daddy died, motherfucking, you don't even come to the funeral with me. You couldn't take off that one day. You couldn't have the assistant coach coach them little niggas. Oh, you got me fucked up. Yeah, like she's holding a lot of resentment against her husband, but I feel like she don't want to speak up because he pays the bills and he run that checkbook and she ain't got nothing else going for her. But you got me fucked up if you think you're going to put a football game over my husband, my father's dying, you know, him, you being at his funeral with me. Like, nah, bro, that's, that's too much. So, um... Jen say, you know, I want to talk to Meredith because I'm loyal. I'm all about let's have each other's back. I'm like, what kind of friend are you? So now she getting hyped up again. Like she mad or whatever. So having her confessional say, I know she's going through a lot and she expects Meredith to be there for her, but she's putting way too much on Meredith. This isn't about a sleepover being canceled. This is about her being frustrated with Sharif and not knowing what to do with the anger. And I was like, exactly, Heather, you put a pin in that shit. Don't nothing else need to be said. So Jen says, you know, I'm pissed because I have invested a lot of time in her. I threw your ass an $85,000 party and this is how you treat me. I supported her because she's going through her separation. 
and boom, right then and there. What have I always tell y'all on this channel? You really see how a motherfucker feel about you when y'all into it or when y'all fall out. Because if a motherfucker start telling your secrets and dishing the tea on you and talking about you as soon as y'all go through something, that bitch was never your friend. See, Meredith was only her friend when it benefited her. But as soon as shit didn't go her way, she started telling her business. Why, why did you feel the need to say that? And you didn't even seem like you gave a fuck about saying it. Shit, you said in your confessional you didn't care about saying it. That wasn't your place to tell that girl that that girl is going through a fucking separation, but you her so-called friend. You care about her so much. And let's keep it a book. For a bitch you just known, barely a year, you throwing her $85,000 party, which once again wasn't even a party for her low-key. It was a party for yourself that you threw under the guise of her birthday. Jen, get the fuck out of her. You ain't a friend of nobody, bitch. So Heather was like, wait, they're separated? And Jen was like, they're separated, but only supposed to be dating each other. So Jen and her confessional says, I feel very betrayed by Meredith. So I'm like, if you're going to betray me, I'm going to talk to my friends about this. Once again, you were never that bitch friend. Bye, girl. So Heather, her confessional says, Meredith has been cool as a cucumber. When I was separated from my husband, I was in the fetal position in the dark. And I was like, well, the difference between y'all is that Meredith got her some side dick. <laughs> Meredith got her whole side nigga, bitch. Meredith ain't thinking about that nigga. That's why she ain't in turmoil over because Meredith already got her back up. So it's the day of Mary's Met Gala theme luncheon, which really wasn't Met Gala theme, but okay, girl, we'll go with it. It was just a really cute lunch. It was really fancy and it was really well put together. So she has gifts for all the ladies on each of their place settings, which I thought was a very nice touch. I'm all about the details. The table setting was immaculate it was beautiful um so uh jen calls her husband sharif for a coach shaw pep talk and he tells her to be aware of her own temperament and that you know she controls you know how she handles herself which is the guy's honest truth but you know that shit went in one and out the other so whitney and heather ride together and whitney asked heather she was like how do you think today's gonna go with mary and jen and jen and mary and heather was like i think jen is gonna make a grand interest and be assessing mary's version of a met gala and once again heather is spot on with her analysis of all of these bitches so whitney and her confessional say i'm really surprised mary invited jen if somebody called me a grandpa fuck i wouldn't be invited them don't worry and i was like exactly whitney bitch so so Heather tells her that Jen, you know, let it slip that Meredith is separated. Whitney is shocked because she's been asking Meredith every time she see her, like, how are you and Seth? How are you and Seth? And she's been playing it like it was like everything was fine. So um, I noticed that Mary finally took off them goddamn gloves of hers or whatever. <clears throat> and I did see the discoloration on her hands or whatever. I know a lot of you have been saying that she bleached her skin or whatever the case may be. If she did, that's her problem. I ain't got nothing to do with it. That's her demon she got to deal with. So, uh, Mary has a red carpet for the ladies and valets, but nobody thinks that it has anything to do with the Met Gala, which it didn't. Once again, Mary look a hot-ass mess. I'm going to give Mary's hair a pass because there aren't many uh, black people in Utah to do her hair, but the fascist girl... She just be throwing on anything. Like, it just don't never go together. So, she just walk around literally just like a 40-year-old punky rooster. So, Whitney, however, looked fabulous as always. She's one of the best dressed girls on the show to me. She always does a simplistic look, but it always comes across very up-to-date and chic. So, Heather and her confessional say, you know, Mary's weird. <laughs> And they show us how Mary is weird because the ladies are all given glasses of champagne. And Mary says, you guys are drinking Don Perignon 20, 2003. In 2003, it was a heat wave. 5,600 people died. <laughs> Does that got to do with anything, Mary? Like, what the fuck? Read the room, bitch. She said, but it made the best grapes of all time. <laughs> this bitch is nuts, but I love her. So the ladies sit down. And we found out that she gave the gifts that she gave them were these inscribed journals and pens. It was very well done. It was so nice and just immaculately done. So Jen arrives late, just like Heather said she would. And her outfit was cool to me, but it was like something like I said, Taraji P. Henson would have worn Empire. I just wasn't feeling it. So she and Mary hug and Mary compliments her outfit or whatever and helps her sit down and explains to her that, you know, all the ladies are supposed to write in their journal something that we don't know about the other person. So she also gives the ladies Louis Vuitton ear pods so they can all hear each other. Like Nene said, see each other, but they need to hear each other. And I was like, oh, Mary got a cool. She's stealing all the church's people money. 
<laughs> oh god but i ain't gonna keep on saying that lady stealing people money because i don't know because i know her grandmother's supposed to left her like a couple of businesses and stuff too i don't know child but she was able to buy them hoes some louis vuitton uh pies uh so i was like get it bitch um i want to uh, marry can i be your friend so uh Ma mary prays before eating and mary says lord in the name of jesus we come to you asking you to bring us together as one and asking for a beautiful lunch today. The girls say, amen, because they think the shit is over. Mary says, thank you for this moment. These girls, Meredith, Jen, Lisa, please, Lord, thank you for everyone. Thank you for everything with me. <laughs> and Jen looking at her like, Really, bitch? Because she was doing the most. Like, I'm like, girl, you was not that overtaken by the Holy Ghost, girl. And them, them crocodile tears, Mary. If you don't get somewhere and stop, she was doing the most. So they finished praying. And she has them served table side, which I, once again, was a really nice tough. She had them whole served truffles. And you know, truffles are expensive. She spent a coin. So Mary says, you know, they, this is the time where they're supposed to open up about, you know, things that they don't know about each other. And Mary says, I have trust issues. You don't just walk into my heart. It's something I'm aware of so I know I can be better. And judging by her background, I understand why she has that guard up with people because you know, people judge her as soon as they find out her, you know, personal life. So Whitney says, something I'm working on is not caring what other people think of me. And one thing I'm not is a swinger. And so she uh, ain't dead at Lisa, but it was meant as a joke. Everybody laughed or whatever. And I really want Whitney to get over people and what they think about her because I think Whitney is fabulous so far. So Lisa says, I have extremely high goals for myself. But it's something that I don't want to change because I love that about me. So... Yeah. <laughs> and Whitney was looking at her like, bitch, that's what you had to say. Like, this bitch is so full of herself. And Whitney, her confession to say, Lisa loves her fucking self. I wish I had that much confidence or arrogance. One of the two. And I was like, yes, ma'am. Because Lisa is just somewhere in the clouds, ho. So Mary says, so Jen, what's up with you? Jen takes a drink and then she goes, my dad grew up with nothing in Tonga and he came to America trying to find a better life for his family. I'm the oldest of six and in the Tonga Polynesian culture, the oldest has a lot of responsibility to always be perfect. It was hard growing up in Utah. Everyone thought I was black, Mary. And Mary was like, I actually grew up black, so I could probably tell you a thing or two. And I was like, exactly like, why do you keep on bringing up this whole everybody thought I was black? Just because you got a little caramel complexion that you're still not black. Let's talk about your experience experience though as being a minority Polynesian Tongan whatever the hell you are like I don't get this whole everybody thought I was black but you're not bitch and Mary actually is black and grew up black in Utah like bitch you want to be black like I don't really get that so Jen continues says I know what it's like to have to work 50 times harder than everybody else just to get the same thing when I say you're my friend you're my friend so that's why I'm so passionate when something happens I'm truly hurt I care so much one had nothing to do with the other how your father came to America you having a hard time growing up in Utah ain't got shit to do with you trying to control who your friends are friends with and who ain't doing what the fuck you want them to do. Like one ain't got nothing to do with the other. Make A and B go together because it don't. So Mary says, but sometimes words can be just as deadly as a weapon. And Jen say, I get that. The smallest action to me cuts me very deep. Even if I don't agree with you, I have your back. I'm sorry for yelling at you. And she says this to Meredith. And Meredith was like, thank you for explaining where you were coming from. And Mary and her confession was like, well, where is my apology? You know, and I was like, exactly. Where is Mary's apology? Like, as you brought her into something and calling this girl a, a grandpa fucker and this, this and that, like you owed her an apology as well. If you was going to give Mary the one. So you could just tell, like I said, once again, um, and what uh, Mary, Mary said, like, uh, Jen is using her as a target, as a storyline. Um, she does want to be the alpha in the group. She was, does want to be the big bitch on top. She's trying to be the needy, the Teresa of the show. And she's making a fool out of herself because the viewers like Mary. They like Mary. They like Heather. They like Whitney. And 
I agree. Um, I just feel like Jen is doing team too much. She's very childish and she needs to work on herself. Um, once again, I give tonight's episode an A. It was funny as hell. Mary's prayer had me cracking the fuck up. I hollered. Jen's meltdown was legendary. The uh, Met Gala themed party wasn't Met Gala, but it was still fabulous, honey. I lived for Whitney's outfit. I lived for Heather saying, I fucked the grandpa. Big deal. <laughs> I lived for Heather asking them to watch her food because the bitch was hungry. I lived for it all. Tonight's episode was great. Next week's episode seems like it's going to be even better. Thank you all for watching this review. I love you and I will see you on the next one. Bye.